answer a hinkle point form and calculate magnitudes and directions of vectors. On the previous lesson, we learned about how to add vectors using graphical method. This time, we have another way of how to do it. Can you guess what's this method? Correct! Adding vectors by components. By definition, adding vector by components is the process of finding the magnitudes of the components in certain directions, where two new vectors in directions that are perpendicular to each other are determined to calculate the resultant vector. Thus, in finding the resultant vector, it's not enough to just determine its magnitude and direction. We also need to solve for its components. As Prelude to explain this method, let's review the definitions of the basic trigonometric functions. For a right triangle, the functions sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta are defined as follows. Sine theta equals the opposite side over hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals the adjacent side over hypotenuse. And tangent theta equals opposite side over adjacent side. In short, it's the SOCATOA. Remember the acronym. To define what we meant by components, let's start with the Cartesian plane in the figure. We can represent any vector line in the x-ray plane as the vector sum of the vector parallel to the x-axis and the vector parallel to the y-axis. These two vectors are called component vectors of vector A, and their vector sum is equal to A. In symbols, vector A equals vector A sub x plus vector A sub y. If we know both the magnitude and direction of vector A by the angle theta, we can calculate the components. From the definitions of trigonometric cosine function, we have cosine theta equals adjacent side over hypotenuse and this is equal to vector a sub x over vector a rearranging the equation the components of vector a along x axis is equal to vector a times cosine theta using the definitions of trigonometric sine function we also have sine theta equals opposite side over hypotenuse equals vector a sub y over vector a. Deriving the equation to get the component of vector a along y axis, we have vector a sub y equals vector a times sine theta. But take note, these equations are correct and valid for any angle from 0 to 360 degrees, provided that the angle is measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. We can also describe a vector completely given its magnitude and direction. By applying the Pythagorean theorem to determine the magnitude of a vector, we got vector a equals the square root of vector a sub x squared plus vector a sub y squared. And to find the direction of a vector, we have theta equals tangent inverse of vector a sub y over vector a sub x. Here's the question. How to indicate the direction of a vector? We apply the following conventions for describing the direction of a vector. First, the direction of a vector is often expressed as an angle of rotation of the vector about its tail from east, west, north, or south. For example, a vector can be said to have a direction of 40 degrees northwest. It means a vector pointing west has been rotated 40 degrees towards the northerly direction. Also, a vector can be said to have a direction of 65 degrees east of south, which means a vector pointing south 
is being rotated 65 degrees towards the easterly direction. And second, the direction of a vector is often expressed as counterclockwise angle of rotation of the vector about its tail from due east. For example, a vector with a direction of 30 degrees is a vector that has been rotated 30 degrees in a counterclockwise direction relative to due east. Another, a vector with a direction of 160 degrees is a vector that has been rotated 160 degrees in a counterclockwise direction relative to due east. Let's apply all what we have learned to answer the following problems. First problem. A rural mail carrier leaves the post office and drives 22 kilometers in a northerly direction. He then drives in the direction 60 degrees southeast for 47 kilometers. What is his displacement from the post office? To solve the problem, here is our solution. We let d sub 1 equals 22.0 kilometers north and d sub 2 equals 47.0 kilometers 60 degrees southeast. We solve for the vector components of d sub 1 by solving first its x component. So our equation will be d sub 1 along x axis equals d sub 1 cosine theta. By substitution, we have 22.0 kilometers cosine 90. For the angle, since d sub 1 is pointing north, it only indicates that the angled form is equal to 90. Thus, we use this angle for our cosine value. And in your calculator, cosine 90 is equal to 0. Therefore, if you multiply 0 and 22.0 kilometers, it will lead us with an answer of 0 kilometers. Thus, this will be the value of x component of d sub 1. Next, we solve for the y component of d sub 1. So our equation will be d sub 1 y equals d sub 1 sine theta. And by substitution, we also have 22.0 kilometers sine 90. And sine 90 is equal to 1 multiplied by 22.0 kilometers. We have d sub 1 y equals 22.0 kilometers. Next, we solve for the vector components of d sub 2, starting with, with the x component of d sub 2. Our equation will be d sub 2 along x axis equals d sub 2 cosine theta. And by substitution, we have 47.0 kilometers cosine 60 degrees. And in your calculator, cosine 60 equals 0 0.5 multiplied with by 47.0 kilometers. We have d sub 2x equals 23.5 kilometers. For the y component of d sub 2, we have our equation d sub 2y equals d sub 2 sine theta. Substitution, we have 47.0 kilometers sine 60, and sine 60 is equal to 0 0.8660. Multiplied together, we have our d sub 2 along y is equal to negative 40.7 kilometers. The negative sign indicates that our d sub 2 along y axis points in the southern direction. So don't be confused with the negative sign. Next, let's solve for the components of the resultant vector A, starting with, with the x component of the resultant vector. Our equation will be a sub x equals d sub 1x plus d sub 2x. By substitution, we have 0 kilometers plus 23.5 kilometers. And the result is 23.5 kilometers. And since it is positive, put our direction going to east. Next, we solve for the y component, and our equation is a sub y equals d sub 1y plus d sub 2y. By substitution, we have 22.0 kilometers plus negative 40.7 kilometers. And the result is negative 18.7 kilometers. The negative sign indicates that the value of the y component of the resultant vector is pointing south. Next, 
we solve for the magnitude of the resultant vector using our equation a equals the square root of a sub x squared plus a sub y squared. Substitution, we have 23.5 kilometers squared plus negative 18.7 kilometers squared. And the result of that is equal to the square root of 901.94 kilometers squared. Taking the square root, the result will be 30.0 kilometers. To solve for the direction of the resultant vector, this will be our equation. We have theta equals tangent inverse of a sub y over a sub x equals tangent inverse of negative 18.7 over 23.5. And the result of that is tangent inverse of negative 0.7957. And taking the inverse tan, we have our result negative 38.5 degrees. Don't be confused about the negative sign again because the negative sign means the angle 38.5 degrees is below the x-axis. So, resultant displacement equals 30.5 kilometers, 38.5 degrees southeast. Second problem. An airplane trip involves three legs with two stopovers. The first leg is due east for 620 kilometers. The second leg is at 45 degrees southeast for 440 kilometers. And the third leg is at 50 degrees southwest for 550 kilometers. What is the plane's total displacement? For this problem, here is our solution. We we'll let D sub 1 equals 620 kilometers east. D sub 2 equals 440 kilometers 45 degrees southeast and D sub 3 equals 550 kilometers 50 degrees southwest. Now, we calculate the components of D sub 1, starting on finding its x component. So our equation will be D sub 1x equals D sub 1 cosine theta. And by substitution, we have 620 kilometers cosine 0. For the angle, since our d sub 1 is pointing in east direction, it only indicates that the angle it formed is equal to 0. That's why we use that value. In your calculator, cosine 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, the result when you multiply 1 with 620, the result will be 620 kilometers. And that is the x component of d sub 1. Or, D sub 1x equals 620 kilometers east. Next, we solve for the y component. Our equation is D sub 1y equals D sub 1 sine theta. By substitution, we have 620 kilometers sine 0, and sine 0 is equal to 0. So the result will be D sub 1y equals 0 kilometers. Now, we calculate components of D sub 2. D sub 2x equals D sub 2 cosine theta. By substitution, we have 440 kilometers cosine 45. And cosine 45 is equal to 0.7071. And by multiplication, we have our result D sub 2x equals 311 kilometers. Or D sub 2x equals 300 kilometers east. Next, we solve for the y component of d sub 2. Our equation is d sub 2y equals d sub 2 sine theta. And by substitution, we have 440 kilometers sine 45. And sine 45 is the same with cosine 45. It is equal to 0.7071. And the result is the same, negative 311 kilometers. This time, we put negative sign on the value of d sub 2y because the y component of d sub 2 is pointing south. Next, we calculate the components of d sub 3. Our equation is d sub 3x equals d sub 3 cosine theta. And 550 kilometers and cosine 53. Cosine 53 is equal to 0 0.6018. And by multiplication, we have d sub 3, which is equal to negative 331 for 331 kilometers. Again, 
We put negative sign on the value of T sub 3 because it points out on the west direction or it points out in the western direction. Next, for a D sub 3 along Y, we have our equation D sub 3 Y equals D sub 3 sine theta. Substitution, we have 550 kilometers sine 53 and sine 53 is equal to 0 0.7986. And the result of that is equal to 439 kilometers. Put negative sign on our result because this of 3 along y is pointing on the southern direction. To solve for the vector components along x axis, we add the x components of all the vectors that we solved earlier. So our equation will be a sub x equals d sub 1x plus d sub 2x plus d sub 3x. And by substitution, we have 620 kilometers plus 311 kilometers plus negative 331 kilometers. And the result of that is equal to 600 kilometers and the direction is pointing east. Next, we add the y components of the resultant vector. So we have a sub y equals d sub 1y plus d sub 2y plus d sub 3y. By substitution, we have 0 kilometers plus negative 311 kilometers plus negative 439 kilometers. And the result of that is equal to e sub y equals negative 750 kilometers. And this result only indicates that the y component is pointing on the southern direction. Next, we solve for the magnitude of the resultant vector, and our equation will be a equals a sub x squared plus a sub y squared. By substitution, we have 600 kilometers squared plus 750 kilometers squared. And the result of that is equal to 600 and the result of that is equal to 960 kilometers. And for the direction of the resultant vector, we have theta equals tangent inverse of a sub y over a sub x. And this is equal to tangent inverse of negative 750 over 600. And the result of that is equal to tangent inverse of negative 1.25. And taking the inverse tan, we have Theta equals 51 degrees. Thus, the total displacement is 960 kilometers, 51 degrees southeast. And now it's your turn to practice some problems. Our first problem. An airplane is traveling 735.0 km per hour in a direction of 41.5 degrees west of north. Find the components of the velocity vector in the northerly and westerly directions. Second practice problem. A disoriented physics professor drives 3.25 km north, then 4.75 km west, and then 1.50 km 45 degrees southeast. Find the magnitude and direction of the resultant displacement of this professor. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you. I am Teacher Randy. Happy to serve.